Hey there, Akuma fans. Charlie with the Gossiker Application staff. Today we're going to be calibrating our touch setter. Everybody seen one of these in their uh, Akuma turning centers? You know it. Most of the uh, turning centers and multitasking machines have uh, a setter now. And we're going to learn today how to calibrate the thing in order to make sure that the offset data that the setter writes to our machine is correct accurate to within a couple of tenths. So we're going to start from cold, as in no one has ever calibrated this setter before. Uh, this first part of the procedure will work if you've bumped the thing or uh, you've never used it. You just want to bring it in close. And then the second half of the procedure we do will fine tune this so that your, uh, your tools are going to be right on the button. So the first thing we need to know is what is our machine X zero for this? Uh, normally, what I suggest you do is to pick either a live tool. Uh, let's find one. Two, 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 two. There we go. So either pick a live tool like this guy here or a boring bar, non-live tool, and we will calibrate the machine X zero so that the center line of this tool is coincidental with the spindle rotational center line when, um, uh, when your machine is at X zero. And I have another video on my channel that describes how to do that. So we're going to skip over that particular process, but, um, uh, feel free to pause this, look that one up if you need to double check, but uh, we'll just assume that you've already seen it. So what we need to do is we're going to put a reference tool in the holder that we have calibrated as machine X0. So this reference tool needs to be of a known diameter. So my favorite is to use a device that looks just like this one. Here we have our standard gauge pin or a drill blank and I have mounted it in an ER collet chuck and I've indicated it both along the X axis and uh, the center of rotation with a coax. So I know that this puppy dog is right on my machine X zero and I also know that the diameter of this is exactly half inch. So now that uh, I have a good reference I'm going to go over to my tool data page, pick up that individual tool. Uh, let's find him. There he is right there. And I am going to manually write in a correct offset, a known good offset. Now, because this tool measures half inch in diameter, I know that when I'm touching it off as if it were a turning tool, my offset should be 0.5. There we go. Now, why isn't it 0.25, anybody? 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 Yeah, this is a lathe. This is a diametrical value. So my measurement is not from the center of the tool out. It's actually from the center of the tool to the diameter, which is a full size there. So now I've got a known good diameter for this particular tool in my offset page. Now I'm going to make sure I'm in manual mode. I'm going to reach into the machine because I do have the manual setter. If you have an automatic setter, we're just going to push the button to extend it. But in our case, we've got a manual. So I'm going to reach up and I'm going to grab this thing round about here, making sure there are no chips built up near the bottom and pull it down. And as soon as I do that, I will get this screen. As long as I'm in manual mode, if you don't see this screen having popped up, then you know that, whoops, I got to be in manual mode. Now we're in stand tool setting mode. So now my next step, index that reference tool around to the cutting position. One more, boom, there we go. Now I can't move my arm down in the graphic, but you're going to imagine that the, uh, the arm is in the, dis the deployed state. So now I will take the, either the pulse generator or the jog keys and I'll move my tool down and position it, oh, I'd say within a quarter inch of the positive side of this sensor cube. Here you can see in this picture the um, uh, 
tool positioned properly. And this is exactly the same process that I would use if I were doing a normal touch off. But now instead of, um, instead of touching off in this tool data page, I'm gonna reach up to my control panel and I'm going to touch the parameter key. As soon as I touch it, I get this display which shows me pretty much the same icons as if I were setting the tool, but because I'm in parameter mode, it now understands that I'm going to calibrate the touch setter instead of calibrate the tool. So I like to reference this to customers as normally day to day, I am using the touch setter to calibrate the tool, but today, because I'm pushing the parameter button, I am now calibrating the touch setter by the tool. And the tool we know is good because I set my diameter right there. So now I will go back into my parameter button and I will touch the, uh, the directional arrow in order to activate the cycle and watch what happens. Tool comes down, beep, beep, beep everybody's happy. Now the uh, the touch setter will have automatically calibrated for the X positive side. I'm not quite done yet. I'm going to come back into my tool data page, take that tool. That was a correct offset for the positive side, but now I want to set it at minus 0.5 so that I can do the opposite side of the tool. And then once again, I will repeat the procedure. This time I will jog to the underside of the stylus, push the execute key in the up direction and beep just like that. Now the tool or now the setter is calibrated on the X minus side as well. So once I have the X positive and the X negative sensors calibrated, now it's time to do the Z. Now we're going to do the Z positive first because it's the easiest and then we'll talk about the Z negative. It's a little, uh, it's a little more complicated, but uh, I've got a great little solution for it. In order to calibrate the Z axis, we just have to have what we call a reference tool. Any tool that we want. In general, people tend to use their finish turning tool. So let's zoom in here and you notice that, okay, there I've got a CNMG and one station further I've got a VNMG that's going to be my finishing tool and I think that's what I'm going to use as my reference is this guy right here. We are going to make sure that our reference tool the Z is set to zero. So set zero. Now because this is set to zero I want to make sure that I don't touch off this tool when I'm setting up a job. Its offset will always be zero. And if I change inserts on it or uh, that sort of thing, um, I, I still want to maintain a Z of zero for the reference tool, mainly because I'm using it to establish my zero point. And if you're not familiar with zero point, check out the video on my channel that's regarding that. It'll show you specifically how to do the little Charlie trick that will, um, will walk you through how to set that zero point. Okay, so let's zoom out just a little bit, move it over, do a little angle change. So now we will pull down the arm again. If we didn't leave it down, it's fine to index tools with the turret or with the tool setter down because your turret is in a safe position. You gotta be all the way up against the stops. You should have clearance, no problem. But uh, with the tool setter down, I will once again manually move the machine and position the reference tool with an offset of zero right to the face of the Z plus sensor portion. Touch the parameter button so that we get this page and then use the executable key, that one right there, to launch the thing forward and it will calibrate Z zero. Just like that. So now I want to set the backside of the Z. And uh, there are several different methods of doing this. Here's, here's my favorite, simply because uh, 
it's quick, it's down and dirty, and it's accurate. An awful lot of people will simply measure the uh, the width of the cube, and they think, okay, no problem. I will just add that width to the parameter. Boom, that guy right there for the uh, sensor minus position in Z. And uh, that should give me, you know, something close, right? Well, yes and no. It does get you close, but what it does not factor in is the amount of deflection that it took for the uh, tool to trigger the sensor in either direction. So usually if you, in my experience, if you do the measurement system, you'll find you're off by upwards of you know, 15, 20 thousandths. It's not, it's not a, a viable solution. So here's what I do. In my machine, I will have mounted a, a groove tool, an OD groove. And it doesn't matter if it's a part off tool or a, a, a regular groove tool like this, either which way, this is what we're gonna use. So first thing to do is to touch off this tool and establish an actual tool length offset using this front corner of the, the groove tool, just like you normally would. Okay, so manual mode, arm down, we will jog the tool into position and beep, we touch it off. Okay, so the touch setter will have added a Z number. Let's get back over here to my detail. Okay, so there is my tool and there is the offset that was registered when I touched off the Z. I know that that is known good, but again, it is calibrated from the front edge of the insert. I want to be calibrated from the back edge of the insert. So logically, all I need to do is go into my tool data, take that number, and we will add to it the thickness of the insert negative. So now I've moved the offset in by minus 118, three millimeters, went from here to here. And now I can use it just like I did everything else, jog it into position and touch off that rear sensor, that Z minus sensor in the parameter mode, and it will calibrate this Z value for me. So now that you know how to rough calibrate, let's do some fine calibration. If in the process of setting a, up a job, you find that one of these sensors is consistently off by a given amount, let's just say two thousandths, we can fine tune this, this, um, this calibration so that in theory, you don't have to make any adjustments to tools once they've run. Now, the reason I say you notice that it's consistently off is if let's say tool number one is off by two thousandths and tool number seven is off by five thousandths. Well, which one do I go by? One might be positive, one might be negative. I'm looking for a specific abnormality that's consistent. Once I know that, yeah, okay, this really is the, um, the tool setting calibration that's off and not cutting pressures or tool orientation, uh, skew, that sort of thing. Now what I'm going to do is I will take my tool that I've touched off the setter, made a cut, and I noticed that I had to add minus two thousandths in order to make this, uh, make this tool proper make a cut what I wanted. Okay, now I'm done. I am going to take that tool wear and I am going to apply it in the offset column. So let's add minus 0 0.002. And you notice that because my parameters are set a certain way, as soon as I adjust my tool offset, it zeroes out my wear for me. That's good. But pay attention, if your parameters are not set to do that, when you add that column, that, that wear value into your offset column, make sure you zero out the tool wear. Now that that's done, I'm simply going to repeat the process for calibration, but instead of using this tool, the calibration tool, I'll use my turning tool, that little guy. It now is cutting known good, so I'll advance the arm, jog the machine into position, Hopefully I'm in manual mode for that. Bring it right above the, the sensor flat that's in question. 
touch parameter mode and execute the, uh, the, the touching cycle. And because I did it in parameters, again, I'm calibrating, not setting the tool. This is very simple, very quick to do, but there are a couple of little catches that I really need to specify. First off, the twin spindle machines, spindle one and spindle two, this, cal this uh, control has a different set of calibration numbers depending on which spindle you are working on. So on this portion of your keypad, make sure that you've selected the spindle that you are attempting to calibrate. So you notice that I have a certain value in here. As soon as I touch my spindle two, better be in manual mode for that. As soon as I touch my spindle two, the values changed. So make sure that you have the appropriate spindle selected when you calibrate. And you can repeat this process the, the whole calibration process when you do go over to spindle number two. That is the first and the biggest mistake that uh, most people make when they're calibrating. You gotta make sure you're in the appropriate spindle during calibration as well as tool touch off. So make sure you double check that. The next issue that uh, people make in general with a twin spindle machine is the type of offset specification that they've made for subspindle tools. If I come over here, you notice that I have my subspindle tool and my main spindle tool in the same block. That's perfectly normal. Uh, just about everybody has one of these types of machines does this at least once in their, uh, their career. But there are two different ways of uh, explaining to the machine that you have two different tools in the same turret station. The first is represented under my turret position number one. Notice that I have offset number one and offset number 21 for tool one. Okay, so that means that offset number one, this guy, is what is used for my left spindle and offset number 21 is what is used for my right spindle and these could be completely different. So here is the stipulation. If you are doing this, the control always looks at offset number one to do its zeroing. And it simply doesn't matter what you put in offset 21, it is always going to look at the offset that's right here. So I've seen very often people not have offset number one populated when calibrating X because they're trying to do the sub spindle. Well, it's not gonna look at this field when you go to touch off. It's only gonna look at this one. So even if it's temporary, make sure that you do your um, entry, your calibration entry in offset number one. If you have chosen to use multiple turret stations, as you see illustrated here in my, uh, my station number two, okay, now I have two turret station twos. I've got offset 10 for that one and I've got offset 30 for this one. That's a little, uh, a little easier because this is still offset number one, this is offset number two. So if that one is the main spindle and that one is the sub spindle, hey, no big deal. I just have to make sure that I have the appropriate turret position highlighted when I do my touch off. Alrighty then, looks like we're fully calibrated and now we can touch off any tool on any side of the cube utilizing either spindle and our part should come out perfect every time. And again, if it doesn't, well, then we'll just get in there and do that fine tune calibration that uh, we just completed. I hope this helps you out. If you have any suggestions for videos, please leave it in the comments. Uh, feel free, like and subscribe. And if you need any one-on-one -on -one assistance, please reach out to your local Gossiger application staff. We're totally here to help you out. Have a great one, everybody.